Hello, everybody. I'm Karina Chen with KarinasCreations.com, and I want to thank you for joining me tonight. This is part of my how-to series because I had a few people who are brand new stampers, so I thought I better do a how-to video to show you how to cut up your cardstock. Now, when you buy cardstock from Stamping Up, uh, you can buy individual colors, or I like to choose a color family. So this is the Brights color family. You get two sheets in each color, a total of 10 colors, for a total of 20 pieces of cardstock. So this is all great, but how do you cut the bases? So that's what I thought I would show you today. Now, if you're a new stamper, I highly recommend that you get a paper trimmer. This is the Stampin' Up! Paper Trimmer. It has a scoring blade that is light gray and a cutting blade that is a dark gray. Um, I have actually switched my cutting blades. If you get one from Stamping Up, this will be on the bottom. There is a little slot in here, a little space where you can spread it apart to pull these out when you need to replace them. And I switched them because that's how my old paper trimmer was set up. And I don't want to mix up my blades. I make a lot of cards. So let's get started. There are basically two ways that you can cut a piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna get a piece of, this is Poppy Parade. And if you cut it the long way, this is 11 inches by eight and a half inches. So if you put the long side at the top and you put it at five and a half inches, which is, this is five, that's six. So this line here is five and a half. And then you just use your cutting blade. I really like the Stampin' Up! Paper Trimmer because this cutting blade is really sharp. You can actually cut more than one card base at a time. And when you cut that in half, that gives you two card bases. Now, the nice thing about this paper trimmer is that with the scoring blade, you could just fold this in half. Um, use a bone folder, use your finger. But if you want it to look nice and professional, if you put the eight and a half inch side along the top and you line this up at four and a quarter inches and give it a score, there's your card base. And can you see that nice crisp fold? Here's your card base. So wasn't that easy? Now, another way, a basic way that you can cut your cardstock is to do it um, this way. So let me get another piece of cardstock. What color should I use? Should I use Pacific Point maybe? Sure, let's use Pacific Point. Okay, so if you start, again, it's the same size of paper eight and a half inches by 11 inches. Now, if you turn it this time so that the eight and a half inch side is at the top, again, we're just gonna cut this in half. So half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. And if you look down here at your measurements, you've got four, you've got eight, or sorry, four, five, and then half is four and a half. So if you move it over to here, that's four and a quarter. So four, four and a quarter, Four and a half, four and three quarters, five. So I really like all the little lines on here. And then if you like to stamp a metric, it also has the centimeters on here as well. But we're going to four and a quarter. And again, I'm just gonna cut that in half. Now I have two card bases. Now you can either fold it in half by yourself and make a little finger mark, or I like to make it look professional. And we're gonna line up the 11 inch side at the top of the paper trimmer. And I'm lining this up at five and a half inches and scoring it. So now this is my other card base. So this one opens up this way, this other one opens up this way. So that's two easy ways that you can cut your card bases. Now the next thing, last thing I wanted to show you was how do you, how do you mat things easily? So what I'm going to show you is, um, I highly recommend if you buy a paper pack from Stampin' Up that you also get a package of Whisper White cardstock. It's um, a little bit different than our competitors. It's really soft white and really, really smooth. And it stamps beautifully. That's what I really like about it. So before I start, we're gonna need, um, we need a stamp because this is how I do my measurements. 
So I take a look at a stamp set. This one is the Daisy Lane stamp set. And I like it because it has two coordinating punches. It has a larger one and a smaller one. So if you don't have any big shot machines or die cutting machines, you can make super cute cards with this set. And it has a couple of nice sentiments in it and it's easy to use. So what I like to do is get an old fashioned ruler and take a look at my image that I'm going to be doing. So this one um, is about two and three quarters. Uh, let's make it, let's do three inches by three inches and then that will give me a nice focal point image to work with that I can stamp on. So I'm going to pull my Whisper White cardstock out, line it up at three inches and then I'll turn it this way. And then that's how I got my nice Whisper White piece. Now to mat this, whenever you're making a piece to mat it, you just need to increase it by a quarter of an inch. So this was three by three. So then I'm gonna use, where's Granny Apple Green? Three by three. I want a piece of Granny Apple Green that's gonna be three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. by three and a quarter. And watch how this just mats together. Isn't that easy? So that's another easy trick, tip trick, call it what you like. Okay, I'm gonna, so I've got this set aside. One thing I do wanna mention too is when you buy stamps from Stampin' Up, in the catalog, it actually tells you which size of blocks you need. So with this stamp set, you would need block B, C, D, G, or H. Now, if your budget doesn't allow you to buy all of those blocks, I usually get one or two blocks to fit the largest images. So for this one, I believe I would need a block D. And all the block um, alphabets, I guess, or the letters are on the side of the block. And I usually put it over the catalog to make sure it's gonna fit. And it does, because most of our stamps are the true size that they're shown in the catalog. And then of course, for my leaf image, this is not gonna fit. So then I think I have a, what block is this? This is a block H. So if you were to buy this stamp set, you would need a block D and a block H, and then the little pieces would still fit on the rest. And you can get the other pieces later on. So I just wanted to quickly mention that. Another thing I like about Stampin' Up! products is that all the colors coordinate together. So if I was buying the Brights paper pack, it's a nice option to get the Brights Designer Series paper. And I'll show you why. I am going to, I think I'll pull out some Daffodil Delight that comes in this paper pack. And it comes in two patterns as well. You get four sheets in two patterns. So there's these two patterns and then these two patterns. And I really like to add about two inches of designer series paper to my card. So what side should we use? You know what, let's use this scripty one, sort of pretty. I'm gonna cut two inches. And what's the, what's the length of my card? You can put it down here and measure. Oh, it's four and a quarter. So we'll cut this to be four and a quarter. There. And then that will give me my nice piece uh, to go on my card. Now, where did my Whisper White layer go? Right, and that would make a super cute card, which I'll make for you right away. Um, I did want to show you though, what if what if you didn't buy the designer series paper and you really want to make a card? I'll show you another option. You can create your own designer series paper. We'll pull out a piece of Whisper uh, Whisper White. We'll pull out a piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock that came in the same paper pack. Again, I'm cutting it four and a quarter by two inches. So I'm going to cut it this way. Four and a quarter by two inches. And then I'll show you the two ways that we can do this card. There we go. Okay, I think I'm ready to start stamping. So this is gonna be a basic, simple card, but it's still gonna be super cute. 
So let's do this if we were creating our own designer series paper. Now what I recommend is that you also get the coordinating ink pads. They come in a set of 10 and you'd get 10 ink pads to match all the colors in your paper pack. Now the nice thing about that is that you get one ink pad for free. I believe they're $92 for 10 ink pads or $10.25 each. And again, you don't have to. You could just get a couple ink pads to match most of the colors in the pack. And to open these up, I'm just going to press at the top. It pops open. Now, mine are well used. If it's brand new, it won't pop at first. You'll have to open it this way, and it's very stiff. And then you just slide it into place. And then to close it, you pull it and then close it up this way. Okay, so let's create a nice little pattern. Should we do maybe some leaves? I think we'll do some leaves. Or should we do flowers? Hmm, I think we'll do the little flowers. That'll be kind of pretty. Okay, so let's just get a block. And again, this is a very basic card, but it still looks super cute. And I like to stamp off a little bit when I'm creating my own designer series paper. So stamp off the paper. See, isn't that cute? And then this is what I have. So you can see you can create your own paper by doing tone on tone. Now, if you don't have all the ink pads, another good option is to buy a Versamark ink pad. And it tends to work with darker colors but it's a clear ink and it will give you a similar look and in fact i'll show you on the other side if you like i am using my simply chamois to clean my stamps okay and then i'll show you what the versamark ink pad looks like mine are very well used well loved look at this it's um, pretty messy, the pad. It's actually should be a white color, but my pads are old and it's not working very well. So that's, I need to re-ink that one for sure. Now, if you're using a dark colored cardstock though, let me show you, it does work a bit better. And whenever you buy a pad, make sure you buy the ink refill. See, that works a lot better on dark colored cardstock. You can see the two colors. But I just thought I would give you that option as well. Okay, let's put our card together. So I'm just going to grab my snail adhesive. Well, let me pull out my Simply Chamois. When you get your stamps from Stampin' Up, they don't come like this. We have two kinds. We have photopolymer and, and rubber. This is a rubber mount. So you actually have to have the sticker on here. I peel off the backing and then take my rubber image, press it against the backing, and then the two pieces are stuck together. That'll have to be another video. There's just so many things to show. I wanted this to be like a five minute video, so let's just do this. Okay, I'm gonna create, or create stamp, a couple leaf images on my cardstock. Put one here because I'm going to be punching it. Maybe I'll put one down here. There we go. And now I am going to. Oh, that's not going to work very well, is it? Well, let's do this again. I forgot. So there's two sides to every paper. going to put it here instead. Okay, let's see. Is that what I was going for? Yes, it is. Okay, now I'm going to stamp my little daisy image. Now I could have just stamped my daisy right on here, but I wanted to show you the punch because I really like the punch. So again, to clean this, if you've got diaper wipes, you can use diaper wipes. Um, this, the Simply Chamois actually come in one solid piece and it's this nice light purple color and you have to add water to it to moisten it. I cut mine into four pieces. That way I have one that's dirty and the rest are clean. So I always know what, when it's ready to go. And then I bought these Claremont cases to store it in so it keeps it moist. Okay, then I'll pull this off. And I should mention too, when you go to pull them off the blocks, 
they, they're very sticky. So get your nail in there and just gently pull it off. Otherwise, you'll separate the rubber from the foam. And if it's a clear mount photopolymer, you won't have that problem. And you're probably thinking, what is she talking about photopolymer? This is photopolymer. See, so they're clear, so you don't have to put anything together. You just peel them off, stick them on the block, and they're ready to go. Our older stamp sets tend to be in rubber, rubber as opposed to clear. So you have to kind of watch that. A lot of people only like photopolymer stamps. Okay, now I need some more Whisper White cardstock. Let's see here. And I think I said it was three inches. I guess I can just stamp right on here. Let's just move this off to the side. I'm going to pull this in. And like I said, this is a very basic card, but still super cute. And when I stamp, I always look at the direction of my punch. So I want to make sure it's lined up. Don't stamp it like this, because then it's not going to line up when you go to punch it. And I'll show you why in a second. Make sure I'm in the camera view. And I'm stamping two because it's going to give me a fuller daisy. And then, then you line it up upside down like so. And I'm going to punch it twice. And I do lots of Facebook Live videos. And my classes right now are done by Zoom meetings. So if you live in Canada, you're welcome to join me from anywhere you want. If you're outside of Canada, you're still welcome to join my Zoom meetings. I just can't sell you any Stampin' Up! products. Okay, and where's my snail adhesive? Put a bit of snail in the center. And you can see what I'm going to do is offset my flower petals, like so. And then if you have a pair of scissors, you can curl the tips down or up, whatever you want. I like to use a bone folder. I also re-ink my pads with this, which is why it's kind of messy. And I'm going to curl my petals down a little bit. You could, you could do it up if you want. And then we're going to put that in the center. And then I also have this little one inch or half inch circle punch. Where did that go? Here it is. Because I'm going to take a little piece off my yellow. No, I don't want to use that yellow. Let's use some of this designer series paper for the center of my flower. Okay. Well, that didn't work very well. Let's try this again. Okay, and then that will give me a nice solid center. Okay, so let's put my card together and you'll see how easy this goes together. So I have my card base. I'm gonna use my designer series paper. And I line it up on my grid paper. You'll notice this says paper pumpkin. In Canada and the US, we have a box that comes in the mail called paper pumpkin. And it is a little box of joy you never know what you're going to get until it arrives. It's been cards lately. I think the next one is cards too. And it comes with your ink spot. It comes with your, your projects and instructions. And it's really fun. So if you don't have a lot of supplies, that's kind of a nice way to collect some stamps as well. Every month the stamp set's different and the projects are a little different. Okay, let's put this together. And then I'm also going to put this on as well. See, isn't this an easy card, but very nice and bright and cheery for some friends. Okay, and then I'm going to put this down, but I really like to get Stampin' Dimensionals. Do I have any whole ones? I do not. Wow, I need to get some more Stampin' Dimensionals. I've got some little mini ones here still. A lot of my customers like the bigger version, but what I'm doing is putting this down because it just adds um, a little bit of dimension to your card. So isn't that cute? And then if you wanted to step it up, if you're mailing it, you want it to be fairly flat. If you're hand delivering it, um, 
we have this really great kind of fuzzy center called Perennial Essence Floral Centers. Look how cute these are. They're fuzzy. Isn't that cute? You know what? I'm going to put this on. Let's put this on here and then I'll give this to my friend. So cute. You can actually emboss these. You can do a whole bunch of different things. Now that's super cute, but I think, what should we say? Smile, friend. I think we'll see. How about smile? I think smile would be nice. Now here's my other tip for cutting my sentiments. So again, I get my ruler or I use my grid paper. There's measurements on my grid paper. So I can pull it down to the corner and go, okay, if I cut this one inch by two inches, that would be lots of cardstock. And I think I already have one on here. One inch by two inch. Well, this is three quarters of an inch. Oh, I think it's still gonna work. Let's try it. Let's be brave. Okay, and the other thing I recommend you get is a black memento ink pad. You're gonna need a black ink pad and a couple solid colors to make cute cards. And I am going to go this way and say smile. Oh yeah, three quarters of an inch was perfect. And again, you just cut that with your paper trimmer. And then I'm gonna be putting it here, but I wanna create a bit of a pennant shape. So this is how I create that. I'm gonna start in the middle, make a snip, and then I'm going in from each side. And we'll just peel that off. And then that looks super cute. Now, another thing I can do with this, if I wanna step it up more, I could just stop there and put it on my card because this is looking pretty cute. You can actually just drag your paper on the edge of the ink pad, totally optional, but it just gives it a little bit of color. Okay, and then I'm gonna use these dimensionals again, these little baby ones, I don't know. You can see I even use the edges. I use every piece of the dimensional that I can get. Okay, this one is gonna say smile smile friend okay there we go and then on the inside since we're talking about cutting paper let's decorate the inside of my card uh, where's my whisper white walked away from there it is okay here's my whisper white and i just know that the inside measurement again you can take you can measure it yourself this is five and a half inches by four and a quarter so if we get rid of a quarter I want my white piece to be four inches by five and a quarter because it was five and a half. Okay, so that's where I'm getting this measurement from. We'll pull in the paper trimmer again. So what did I say I needed? Four inches by five and a quarter. Four inches by five and a quarter. There we go. And I'll put this on the inside of my card. Again, with my snail adhesive. And we'll just center it so you can see it fits perfectly. And now let's put this in Poppy Parade. Or no, should it be yellow? What color did I do? I think I did Daffodil Delight. So let's keep the Daffodil Delight color going. There. Okay, what's the other sentiment that comes with this card? Oh, what did it say? I have smile, friend. Smile, the best moments in my life happen with you. Oh, that's such a nice saying. Okay, sometimes these get stuck to the lid, so you gotta look around for them sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna mount it on here. I'm gonna peel this off. You know what? I'm gonna clean it because otherwise... I'm gonna have a disaster on my hands. I just know it. I have a feeling that if I don't clean up my stamping space, it'll be sad. Now, because it's a rubber mount stamp, I'm not sure if I did it straight, I like to practice. Because I should have, I should have stamped it first and then glued it inside, because you have two sides to every paper. Okay, I'm just gonna be brave 
and hope it's not too crooked. Oh, that's perfect. Now that's pretty cute. Do you see how I have a little bit of overhang here with my designer paper? Let's just give that a little trim. And then I'll grab an envelope. I'll show you how we decorate our envelope. The envelope, Stampin' Up! has envelopes that you get 40 of them in a package. So they're quite cost effective. And I really like having the coordinating envelope to my card. So let's use this cute little flower again in Daffodil Delight. I'm just gonna move this over here. So it's not such a messy stamping station. We're gonna put one flower down here. We're gonna put one flower on the back. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do three flowers. Okay, so that is how you cut a basic card base and how you can mat your cards. And then this is the card that I created. So what did that take? 15 minutes, 25 minutes of talking? That's not too bad. So hopefully if you love these projects, I would love to help you order supplies. You can go to karinachin.stampinup.net or I have a blog at karinascreations.com or I'm also on Facebook. You can find me, Karina Chin. Um, and I think my business page is Karina Chin Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. So I hope you've enjoyed the video today and I hope you have an amazing day. Thanks for watching. Bye.